Okay, welcome to Exponents Fundamentals 1. In this lesson, we're going to be going over uh, the exponent power rules uh, that you really need to know to get the easy and the medium SAT math questions right. You know, even before you start looking at the hard ones, you really have to have these rules down. So let's take a look. Uh, probably the first and most important rule you've heard in school, and I'm just going to reiterate it here, is that the bases must be equal when you're multiplying or dividing numbers with exponents. So if you take a look at this example, we're multiplying here. a squared times a to the third, that's going to give you a to the fifth. All you do when the bases are equal and you're multiplying, you add the exponents. So let's, let me give you an example here, and you can you know, follow along at home. Let's say we had 6 squared times 6 to the fourth. Okay, all we're going to do is keep the base, add the exponent, 6 to the sixth. All right, so what do you do when you're dividing? We have a to the sixth divided by a to the fourth. All you're going to do, since the bases are the same, we're going to subtract the exponents. So 6 minus 4, we get a squared. Let me give you an example of that one. What if we had 5 to the tenth divided by 5 to the third? Bases are the same. Let's keep it. 5 to the seventh. That's just 10 minus 3. Okay, so those are pretty basic. I'm sure a lot of you guys know those. Just good to go over. Uh, here's one that sometimes people forget. When you're raising uh, a power to a power, you're going to multiply. So a to the third raised to the fourth is just going to be a to the three times four, or 12. So you're just going to multiply those powers. And let me give you an example of that. Let's say you had, I don't know, let's go 5 cubed raised to the fifth. Well, we're going to get a really big number, but that's okay. We just keep the base, and we get 5 to the 15th. 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, so let's keep going over some other things. Um, a to the 1 half, all right? Now, that's a fractional exponent, but all a to the 1 half means is you're doing radical a. So let me give you an example. What if I said 4 to the 1 half? Well, that's the same thing as radical 4, which is equal to 2. So to the 1 half doesn't mean 1 half of the number. All right. When you do it to the 1 half, that's saying uh, find the square root. So let me give you another one. What if we did 16 to the 1 half? So 16 to the 1 half is going to be radical 16, which equals 4. Okay. So we went over a bunch of rules. There's a, I don't know if this is necessarily a rule, it's just something you should know. When you're squaring a number with a variable, all right, you have to distribute whatever you're raising it to, to both things. You have to distribute that. So 3x squared does not equal 3 times x squared. Okay? So let's look at, let's look at that first one. 3x, the expression 3x squared is 9x squared. We gotta square the three and we gotta square the x. Let me give you another one just so we can uh, work on that. What if I give you one with more variables? If I give you 12x cubed y to the fourth and that whole thing squared. Well, you gotta raise each, you gotta square each piece, right? So 12 squared, 144. x cubed squared, you multiply the exponents. And the same thing with the y to the fourth. That'll give you y to the eighth. Okay, so so far we talked about what happens when the bases are equal. Well, on the SAT, they're not going to be so nice, right? They're not always going to give you equal bases. So what do you do? When the bases are not the same, make them the same. Now, how do we do that? Well, it's it's kind of a, uh, it kind of comes with experience and knowing numbers, but uh, you got you to gotta be able to put numbers in different forms. And let's, let's take an example, look at an example here. It says, if 3 to the x equals 9 to the y, what is x in terms of y? So I have a base of 3 and a base of 9. So what you got to do is, let's try and make this base of 9 into a base of 3. So let me rewrite this here. We got 3 to the x equals 9 to the y. Well, we know 9 is 3 squared, right? Now we can't forget that it's being raised to the y. Let me just fill in the left side here. So when I raise a power to a power, I multiply, right? So that's 3 to the 2y. So now that my bases are equal, I can set my exponents equal. So x equals 2y, choice C. 
And uh, just a quick comment, whenever you see this whole thing, what is X in terms of Y, it can be a little confusing sometimes. All you gotta know, it says X in terms of Y, you gotta get X by itself. If it said, you know, G in terms uh, of Y, you're gonna get G by itself. H in terms of T, H by itself. So just get the first thing by itself. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna talk about in uh, Fundamentals 1 is thinking flexibly about numbers. Now what does that mean? Well, as we saw in the last one, we gotta convert nine, or we gotta change it into a number that has a three with the base, right? So I just wanna show you 81. How can we change that? We can make that nine squared, right? And we can even go further with that because nine is three squared. But you gotta remember that whole thing was being squared. Can't forget that two from before. So that's three to the fourth. 64. 64 is going to be 8 squared. And maybe some of you guys at home are saying, ah, we're done. 8 squared. Well, 8, nice number to know, is 2 cubed. We can't forget about the 2. So that's 2 to the 6th. So 64 is equal to x uh, 8 squared. And that's equal to 2 to the 6th. 81 is equal to 9 squared which is equal to 3 to the 4th. And lastly, 27 is just a good number to know. You should know that that's 3 cubed. Negative 27 is negative 3 cubed. Just some good numbers to know. Uh, so that basically wraps up Exponents Fundamentals 1. Stick around for Fundamentals 2. Where we're going to be doing some harder rules and some harder problems.